Saturday morning in Chicago, March 4th, 1989. The DePaul Blue Demons are on a mission, seeking a sixth consecutive NCAA tournament bid. They begin preparing for a key game against the Marquette Warriors. It's a long day that begins early. In Alumni Hall, the Blue Demons pack their bags and begin a regimen that will end over 12 hours later. Rosemont Horizon. The name alone strikes fear in the heart of a visiting coach. The Blue Demons win 9 out of 10 games here. Not even the Celtics in Boston Garden can match that. Tip-off is still over 8 hours away. It's quiet now. Time for practice. A last chance for on-court preparation by both players and coaches. Assistant coach Dwayne Tyus knows it from both sides. Being a former player really helps me out a lot because I see some of the things that they've been through. Our backgrounds are sort of similar in a lot of different ways. I think that really gives me a plus in that area. And I just try to you know, be an ear so that uh, that player can come in and talk to me and I'm right there for him. And just be positive with him at all times. Uh, I think that's the key, being positive and, and uh, not just to be their friend, but just be there and tell them the right thing to do. Assistant coach Jim Molinari talks about success. Well, I think what we'd like to see him do is one, obviously, is to grow in each area of their life. You know, grow intellectually, grow socially, grow spiritually, and grow athletically. And I think that would be my goal for all our players that come to DePaul. Obviously, you can see that in direct results. Have a degree, you know, receive a degree. I think that's utmost importance. So I think no one can ever lose sight of that because you only play basketball for a short period. Basketball-wise, take whatever talents they have and improve on those. You know, become a better player. Assistant coach Jim Platt emphasizes practice. We've always felt and been under the philosophy that you're going to play pretty much the way you practice. I think you can make adjustments during the course of the game, but I think they're going to be adjustments that you've worked on during the course of the practice session. And so we always try to create as many situations in practice that might conceivably occur in a game, and, and hopefully then we can make those adjustments during the course of it. I think it's important also that both coaches and players really remain focused and really concentrate. I think there's so many things going on during the course of a game with the crowd and the officials and the emotions of players, emotions of coaches, that it's really important that you stay focused on what's happening on the court so you can zero in and see and really read what's going on and make the proper adjustments during the course of the ball game. Game day is filled with emotions, according to assistant coach Jay Goddard. I think that you feel a great sense of anticipation and a great sense of excitement. Excitement because it's a, it's a real big time college basketball game and a sense of anticipation because you, you work all week long to formulate game plans and try, and try and get the kids to do exactly what you want them to. And then there's the anticipation of sitting there watching it all happen or, or not happen. And then a, a great feeling of satisfaction if it does come true. After practice, the waiting game begins at a nearby hotel. For players, it's a time to relax. But for coaches, the tension is building. Head coach Joey Meyer prepares for his team. I think the more prepared you are, the less you give your team. Um, so I think you watch a lot of tapes so that you don't give your team very much. Uh, when you give your team a lot of tape or a lot in the scouting report, it usually means you're not very well prepared. So um, you watch a lot of tape to keep things simple. It still comes down to how much talent you have and how well they're going to execute. 
I think, you know, every year we set up one important goal, and that's to make the NCAA tournament. And uh, we did that. And uh, when you meet, meet that challenge, then you've met your goal. So uh, I was real pleased the way they developed as the year went on. As you say, going 10-9 and 9 to 21-12 and 12 tells you there was some development there. And, and I think our young players improved. I think our seniors gave us some real steady leadership down the stretch. So, uh, you know, I was pleased the way we were playing at the end of the year. The waiting is broken by the pregame meal. The first time in almost four hours the team has been together. And it's still four hours until tip-off. Stan Paul. By the way, Engelbar, lefty. Most of that time will be spent together, starting with a team meeting, strategic talk, and a pop quiz. Chucky T, when we start this thing, I want one of you guys here, so Smith has to come up. With I think concentration and attention are, you know, the real keys to kids evaluating and, and understanding what you're talking about. And I think sometimes if all you do is talk and they sit back and, or as they say, kick back a little bit, and, and I don't think they're concentrating as much, but if they know they're going to be asked a question, I think they're more on edge. I think they're concentrating more because they might be called upon to, to respond to something. Stanley Brundy, one of the Paul's greatest players, among the school's top career scorers, rebounders, and shooters. Among the greats in block shots and steals. 47 points in a game his senior year after scoring just 45 all year as a freshman. He always knew he could do it. When I first got here, being a freshman, it's like I didn't think I was going to play at all because when I got here, it's like you had a lot of seniors, which I didn't get to play that much, but I was saying to myself, you know, you have to just wait your turn, be patient. You know, that day came for me, you know, I got the chance to prove to people that I can play in a Division One, you know, school. So I just set that goal for myself and I concentrated and things worked out for me. After preparing the mind for the game, it's time to work on the body and a visit to Director of Sports Medicine, Mike McCormick. It's kind of a critical time for me as a trainer in that uh, not just are we trying to get them ready physically with uh, taping injuries, but also emotionally just seeing where their head's at for that game um, if they're coming off an injury counseling at that, at that point as to what they can do or couldn't do or shouldn't do uh, as well as it's it's kind of a the prankster time for me to keep people loose because i really think that it's important that an athlete is is comfortable and relaxed going into competition because they, it's shown they perform better and when supper was ended he took the cup Spiritual time also. Team chaplain Father Jay Young celebrates the pregame mass. Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. And do this in memory of me. While the team makes final preparations to leave for the Rosemont Horizon, the Horizon is being ready for the game. Final minutes before the game, tension builds, hearts pound, energy rises. One last meeting. Simple instructions, take the floor. This is just screen to screen and scored on as gives us last time. Two post players stand with ball one and paw. We're just switching that. Don't let them step inside you, all right? So if we're in a man to man, we don't we switch and don't let them step inside for the zone. Just keep it tight and make them throw it out, all right? So make sure you remember on the three-point shot up here. Tip off, same thing we always do. Two up, two back. Or you step in, stand, take a look either side, see where is the best place to tip the basketball. 
and I'm ready to play. You know, I mean, I, I'm tired of talking. Let's go out and play. Terrence Green, he covers the court as a scorer and as a rebounder, a passer and defender, one of DePaul's greatest as a player and a leader. Being a leader, you have to do a lot of different combinations of things. You have to sit back and listen. You have to speak and, you know, you just have to have an open door policy with the players if you're the captain. And we had so many young guys, you have to sit back and you know, be a big brother sometime, you know, as you could say. And I think they learn from me and they can carry it down to the to the next players coming on. Finally, the Blue Demon's patience is rewarded with 40 minutes of action. DePaul wins by 12, a key victory as the Blue Demons run to another 20-win season and a sixth consecutive NCAA tournament appearance. Mission accomplished.